first uh, thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak here. It's definitely a, a pleasure to be to be in the Quranis uh, version two. So I so I will. So my assignment was to talk about uh, the you know uh, Grosz-Zagier formula and generalization to to high high dimensional Shimura varieties. So by by the end you know approaching the end of the summer school. So I'm assume everybody now is familiar with uh, Shimura varieties and and uh, relative trace formula and so on. Uh, <coughs> although I will recall um, uh, what I need uh, when when the time comes. So let me start with uh, the classical. Uh, so the classical. Uh, I mean the the gross the gross work in the 1980. Uh, Um, so the classical Grozaki formula. Uh, so this is roughly in the in the middle of 1980. So what what is the uh, what is the setup here is uh, is the following. Um, so let me so let me consider a quadratic field k. So k okay. This is only for for once. K is not a compact open subgroup <laughs> because I think we have got used to. K being a compact open, so I mean I only use this in the beginning. So later on, I will also switch to <laughs> where K will be a compact open subgroup of uh, you know certain. Uh, okay, so K here is a, is a quadratic imaginary quadratic um, quadratic field. <clears throat> um, so consider a elliptic curve. Uh, I would call it A. So A is a elliptic curve over Q. Uh, although uh, later on, you could generalize. Uh, you could allow A to be a to be a G O two abelian varieties. Um, but anyway, here let's say elliptic curve over Q for simplicity. At the time of Grozzi formula, we uh, we were uh, we didn't. I mean, people didn't know elliptic curve. Necessarily uh, was necessarily modular, but anyway, you, you could start with a modular elliptic curve. Um, uh, then I consider a modular curve, so so the com compactified x x not of n for n being an integer. So this is a modular curve with gamma not of n level. <coughs> So you consider a modular parametrization. So let's consider x lot of n goes to goes to a. See infinity. So there's, there is well there are at most um, at least two distinguished uh, cuspidal points. One is zero, one is infinity, <laughs> and they are switched by by involution called the uh, Artin-Lenner involution. So we will pay close attention to those two distinguished. Cuspidal point, so infinity. So let's normalize. Clearly, this is a normalization issue because A is, is a group of variety you can translate. So to rigidify the situation, let's assume infinity goes to zero. Um, so in that way, at least you you have a less flexibility, uh, uh, less flexibility where you can still multiply by by say by two or three by integer. But that's pretty much it. Um, so then uh, attached to so here a point, a point here can be described using a, okay, now I'm using E to indicate a elliptic curve to distinguish from the, you know, A here, really A here does not have to be a elliptic curve. Really it's a, it can be a GO2 abelian variety, a GO2 type abelian variety. So here, so a point will be a, described by a pair of elliptic curve associated, uh, uh, I mean, by cyclic degree N isogeny. So cyclic, you know, isogeny, degree n isogeny. Um, so Grozaki, uh, well, actually Higner first considered uh, you can attach a, a, a pair of, for example, you can choose, well, over a complex number, you can at least the complex coordinates, I mean, can be described using uh, uh, the following two elliptic curve c over the room of integers then you, you consider uh, c modulo an ideal say 
uh, calligraphic n, which is a which is a uh, ideal of OK of a norm exactly equal to n. So so there's definitely I mean there is a condition on the existence of such ideal. Uh, so that's so-called Higner condition. Anyway, um, it, it, it's you have to impose a condition on n and the dis and this quadratic field k to guarantee the existence. So this point actually is defined over, you know, by by the by class field theory for for uh, uh, for I mean by the comp by theory of complex multiplication. So we know this will define over the uh, the so-called Hilbert class field. So anyway, I can write this as k a binary extension, although it's it's much smaller. It's really in this smaller uh, the unromified extension of k. Um, so then you, anyway, you can take a trace. You so this defined point. Then you can uh, so you, so you, this point is called x of k depends on k. So y of k. Will be the image. Uh, so let me. Uh, so okay, let me let me write this. Use a different letter. So we call this. Uh, this could be called a phi. So phi of x k. So this is defined uh, again. On certain. Again on the on the Hilbert class field of k. Um, so what the Grozaki proved was the following. Um, um, ah, so here, right, so let's give you a point on A. Um, a is a little curve, so I, let me also recall you, there is a uh, very useful numerical uh, invariance attached to uh, you know, the points over a number of fields. Uh, of, of any abelian variety, so see here it's neuron tate height, height pairing. Um, yeah, I'm wondering where should I put it here, here or here? Oh, E, right? No. <laughs> so neuron tate height, you know, when you write on the board, actually, you, it's hard to, when you write a, a tech file, you just, you know, by instinct, you put on E, right? When you, on the blackboard, you start to look for E or O. <laughs> so, okay, neuron tate height. Uh, <laughs> height parent. So this is a parent. Um, um, well, okay, so maybe, um, right, so it's, it's a parent between two, two uh, abelian groups. Um, so, well, A is a little curve, so, all right, let me still write it in this way, so the dual abelian variety, although in the case of a little curve, it's the same as A itself, so, th so there's a pairing with the value uh, uh, in the real number, uh, it's positive definite in the sense, well, it, so the only kernel will be the uh, uh, the torsion points, so it's also a uh, positive definite quadratic form. If you ignore the torsion, um, so the theorem Grozaki proved the ones. Uh, ah, you need to do <laughs> one more step. Let's let's say so also. So I have a point on the on the Hilbert class field. So let me let me trace down. So I have a point over larger field extension. I can take a trace down to the field k. So so I will take. So I needed to get a new letter, so y, y of k, so take a trace. Uh, from the Hubert class field to k, so, so it's called, um, so I, I use x, y, maybe called a z. So z of k, z lower k, so this is the point, actually a, a of k. So theorem, so Grozaki proved is the following. So if you if you compute the height, so I, so it depends on you you know which which one you prefer, the L function or or the or the Higgins points. So you will put it on the left hand side, 
or right hand side. <laughs> so, so let me put a, um, so okay, I think to be consistent with the uh, earlier part of the summer school, let me write Leonard height, so Leonard Tate height. So it's this one. So Z, ZK. ZK. So the self, the self pairing, it's a long negative real number. So this is equal to uh, the base change of this abelian variety to K. Um, then evaluate at one, which is the central central point. Uh, so I'm using the, you know, this, so I'm just taking one as a central point of the O function. Um, then take a derivative. Here I put a dot to indicate I'm also uh, kind of cheating a little bit. There's also some normalization factor and so on. Um, but that's roughly um, what this, you know, uh, remarkable formula uh, of Gorzaghi. Um, um, so, um, right, so, okay, any, any question here? Uh, okay, so, so actually, um, I mean, one immediate consequence is that, um, actually, I only spent 10 minutes formulating the formula. I remember my, fir my first talk back uh, to graduate school about the Grozaghi formula. It took like one hour to formulate. <laughs> so usually when you give a talk, it's only the last five minutes you start to, <laughs> you're able to reach the statement. So I, I found actually, uh, so then maybe I, maybe I don't know if I skip anything already. So, <laughs> so, so, so that's, so, uh, I mean, one immediate consequence as, as actually in Charles Lee's talk uh, yesterday and two days ago, he already mentioned, I mean, you, you, you get the Grozaghi direction of, uh, uh, say, application to BSD conjecture, right? If you assume L function has order one, then the uh, derivative doesn't vanish. Therefore, you, you get a non-trivial point uh, of, uh, of this elliptic curve defined over k, so therefore you, you see the model v you run is at least one. So that's one immediate consequence. Um, then you combine with Kolivagin's direction, uh, which says if you assume that, that this point is non-torsion, uh, then uh, the, actually the model v rank is uh, at most one, and the Tedish average group is finite. So. Um, so that's an uh, independent direction due to Kolivagen. Um, so here, actually, I want to just you know just give us a better idea what what this point is. Um, uh, I also want to mention. Uh, so when Higner himself uh, consider uh, this construction, um, uh, I mean, uh, strictly speaking, Higner, Higner's construction. I mean, Higner his original paper in you know, the 1950. Was was not exactly was different from this situation. First of all, he did not really consider uh, x not of n. So let me just actually state a result, which I think was already proved in, in Higner's paper, and just to give us some idea. What? Uh, so let me, let's say this is one. Uh, we move it by itself. Uh, ah, one. It's, it, it slides better than I thought. So, so, so Higner in 1950. So, um, so the reason we call it Higner point. I mean, this point y, uh, z of k. Um, so Higner consider a situation where well, he he didn't have modular. I mean, he just he just had a uniform, he had a modular curve. Uh, so it was a. Uh, um, he had a situation where, so the following, so imagine the following situation. You can view this as one example of what I said, but it's not really the same because, okay, you have a modular curve, um, some modular curve, uh, and with a parametrization to a little curve. 
concretely, this means what Higner did was to use some modular elliptical functions, uh, sorry, <laughs> modular functions of level, maybe level 8 or level 32, I don't remember exactly, but concrete modular function, which was already considered by, in the 19th century, by, uh, particularly by Weber. So Weber has, has a book, Algebra, where, which contains a lot of formula about uh, modular functions. So if you have a modular function of level 8 or 32, you, if, you, if, you, if you happen to uh, uh, cook up some formula which give you a cubic equation, you know, like uh, equation for elliptic curve. So that's what happened. So you, I mean, that's, I mean, for example, actually, so here, it's not really Higgin, but anyway, so, so this is, for example, x032 itself is a elliptic curve itself. So here you, you, you get an elliptic curve already. Um, so then you, you do this construction. So, so you plug in some quadratic field where um, the quadratic field looks like Q of uh, square, root of, square root of P, negative P maybe, for some prime P. Uh, so what happened is, in this case, I mentioned earlier that two, at least two distinguished cusp points, one is zero, one is infinity. So the so so what happens is actually the zero and the infinity. Um, so in this case, so zero and the infinity is actually not. It's not it's not zero. It's it's a torsion divisor, but not a zero, not a rational equivalent to zero. So it's a torsion point on the Jacobian variety of of this modular modular curve. So you get a torsion point on the on this on this elliptic curve. If you choose this to be isomorphism or you know, or maybe some simple two isogeny, for example. So what 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 happened is in this case, so this point uh, z k, um, so satisfying. So let me write as a fact. So so, th so it's a satisfying equation. So what equation? So you have a point so z k over a k, and uh, so what happens is this point, well, here there's, there, there is a Galois involution, so sigma. So sigma is a generator of the, of the Galois group of this quadratic field, k over q. Um, so the equation in Satisfy is, if, if you consider the trace, so if you consider the Galois conjugate, so sigma, um, it's actually this torsion point. So, so let's call the point. Let's call this point. Uh, you know, not, but it's a non-zero. It's an image of infinity zero. Anyway, it's actually torsion, but non-zero. It's non-zero. Uh, it's Q, where Q is is a non-zero, but two torsion uh, of Q. So, so it has this can this can be verified easily. Actually, it's it's not hard. To prove <laughs> using alternate nano evolution and uh, the, the alternate nano uh, uh, eigenvalue being plus one or minus one, I don't remember. Anyway, so one, one of the two situations. The key is that this is, even though it's a torsion, but it's not a zero. Okay, so I leave you as an exercise to check. Um, if you assume P is large enough, or anyway, to, to be away from the given ramification of A, I mean, A is a little curve of conductor 32, so. Say so, so P is large, so there's no, you know, there's no common ramification with, with A. To the extent that you can, uh, uh, you can arrange K so that the two torsion, uh, all the two uh, two power torsion, two primary torsion, um, actually uh, uh, are all defined over. So there's no new torsion, two, two primary torsion, when you move from Q to K. And in fact, it's only two torsion. So there's no higher torsion over Q. When you move... To assume something about phi. For instance, yeah. phi could be chosen to just kill this Q. Then, then, you are, then you aren't getting nothing, right? So you have to choose phi correctly. You have to choose choose five correctly, yeah. which does not annihilate, uh -huh. uh, which does not annihilate this uh, torsion divisor. So I think, <laughs> so I, okay, I, I learned this from Yi Tian. So he told me if you choose a two two isogeny, 
So you will get you will get a being actually, a will be the elliptic curve given by you know this con congruent so called a congruent number elliptic curve, right? It's a very concrete elliptic curve of conductor thirty two maybe. Uh, uh, if you choose certain two isogeny, you you actually will or some form of this elliptic curve, so close relative to this elliptic curve. Um, so the, the punchline is that you, you have this equation where this is a two torsion. It's actually the only two torsion. So actually, yeah, let me, let me add this. This seems to be the only two torsion. Okay, actually, that's not true. So anyway, <laughs> it's a non-zero non tor non torsion. That's the key. And your quadratic field is chosen so that the two primary torsion don't grow, and they're all two torsion. So these are not hard to, to, to check just by, by, by ramification reason. Um, so then actually from those two, so one is kind of intrinsic to the construction of Higgin point. Two is dependent on the choice of your quadratic field. So one plus two implies this point is non-torsion. Implies z of k is non-torsion, uh, not torsion. So in particular, you already proved the elliptic curve has a uh, over k. I mean, once your base change to k, it has more than a v rank at least one. So right. I mean, to say this non-torsion is, is rather simple if you if you have two because if there were torsion, let's say if, let's say it's two torsion. I mean, you can just consider the two torsion part, right? So the two torsion, a uh, two primary torsion part. Well, since we know the two primary torsion must be two torsion over q actually. So the Galois involution acts trivially, right? Therefore, if you have trivial action on the two tor uh, on the uh, on the two torsion, this equation can never be true. Actually, it will be twice of twice of two torsion, which will be zero. It can never be a non-trivial two torsion. So this is actually rather. So that's essentially the argument that Higner used, uh, where he was able to prove um, that. Um, if you choose prime p, or you have to arrange all those situations. So actually, really, what he, the, the, the outcome of Higner theorem was that if p is a prime, say congruent to one, uh, sorry, another one, okay, five, maybe five and seven, modulo eight, then p is a congruent number, meaning meaning this uh, quadratic twist by yeah, p is a, it's a con congruent, meaning it's a, it's in other word, this quadratic, cur quadratic twist, so p of y square is x. This has a model we rank one, has infinite order point, has infinite many rational points. Points. So, that, so that's what essentially he proved. I mean, it took another 60 years uh, until Ye Tian was man able to man, uh, uh, generalize or extend this argument to, to prove you can actually allow arbitrary many factors of primes to, uh, uh, of factors uh, in, in congruent numbers. So, um, okay, so, but actually, again, so what, two remarks. Why is here, this actually, this parametrization, um, I didn't tell you exactly what the Higgin point, uh, Higgin condition was in Grozagi. Strictly speaking, Higgin's construction does not satisfy Grozagi's condition. Uh, secondly, I was also lying. Higgin did not use this modular curve. He was using x of eight, I think. So, so some other uh, modular curve. Um, right. But you see that different kind of parametrization of the same elliptic curve. Can be all useful, so you you might you 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 might want to actually change uh, parametrization from uh, uh, by one modular curve, uh, uh, you know, switch to a different one, or even if you have the same modular curve, you might have different choices of parametrization. Uh, so this actually can be all captured by so by so that's I mean that was part of the reason. So uh, with the uh, Qin Yuan and Xiu Wu Zhang, so we. We proved a more general version, at least, which on one hand generalize uh, this formula to from rational number, I mean, to the you know quadratic field to arbitrary, arbitrary same fields, uh, 
on the other hand, also allow uh, the flexibility of chosen different uh, different uh, parameterization. So, so the other, I mean, the other motivation was actually um, uh, the, the other motivation for our work was to have a true analog to uh, Wasbrugge's formula, so which I believe uh, Pierre Henry is lecture last two weeks, uh, two weeks, I mean, one or two weeks ago, <laughs> uh, already presented, uh, you know, mentioned Wasbrugge's formula. So, so here, let me move to, so the, um, so the, as a, so let me, so that's part one, let's say part two. So let me recall, uh, let me also now formulate, um, so the gross Zaghi formula for, uh, for, you know, for general, for more general GO2 case. Um, the, uh, uh, so the goal is to show you how we should compare this formulation with Wasbrugge's formula. So let me, let me recall you actually what, what it was, very quickly what's Wasbrugge's, so Wasbrugge's formula. Um, so from there, maybe we can see how to how to view this as some kind of arithmetic version of a relative relative Langlands program, or you know, in a sense, you have a uh, so if you have a problem about automorphic Pierce integral, you should hope for a arithmetic version. Uh, so here was Bruges formula was. So very quickly here, I have a uh, group G called well, a quaternion, well, now let me, <laughs> so now let me fix some notation here. I'm gonna use this notation for the rest of the lectures. So now I'm gonna fix a quadratic extension, f prime over f. Uh, quadratic. Uh, it could be local or global, but, um, okay, I'm, Maybe I'm having an unconventional choice of a quadratic, quadratic uh, extension because you could, people call it f over f plus or e over f. So I also have, now I have a third choice, the third one, which is f prime over f. Um, so I have a quad, I have, if I have, I mean, what's Bridget's formula has a, so you, you, you start with a quaternion algebra uh, over f. Um, so and embedding as f algebra of, of the quadratic extension to B. Um, so then I have the group um, so G being the, the multiplicative group of, of B and I have a torus H which is f prime cross as a torus over f. So, um, so then I have, well, so the formula says, um, so roughly it says if you have a tempered automorphic representation of B, um, so, so here, let me recall you the notation here. So if I have a group G, so, so the G bracket is, is the automorphic quotient G of Adels modular G of F. Uh, so A will be the Adels and so on. Um, so now if I, if I choose a form phi here, also choose a form in the contra gradient of pi. So I can form the automorphic, automorphic here is integral over over h. Okay, I'm I'm ignore ignoring the issue of center non-trivial center. So I really have to take it over the center before um, um, phi of h d of h. Wasbridge also allow a twist by a by certain characters of h. But anyway, let, let me just for simplicity, let me take the trivial character. So phi of so 
again, you need to go over the same time. So the output is, is the L function. Again, I'm just writing down the L function uh, involving the central value. So pi base change to base change to F prime. Now I'm using the automorphic normalization where the center is half. Um, so then there's also local quantity given by integration of matrix coefficient. Um, okay, suppose this is decomposable. <clears throat> so yeah, um, so here again, I'm, I'm running a dot here to indicate. <sighs> so that's what was Bruges formula is about. So now, um, so now the um, uh, Right, so now for, for Grozaghi, um, um, general Grozaghi over GO2. So what you can do is, uh, you know, to kind of to compare it over, to compare it with what's Bruges formula. So I can, so I'm gonna write, so given a elliptic curve A or, or GO2 abelian variety, GO2 type abelian variety over, over F. So now here, well, this, this condition here, F prime over F, needs to be CM extension. Uh, so F is a totally real, F prime is a, is a uh, quadratic extension, CM quadratic extension. Um, so here I'm gonna take a, well I can take modular elliptic curve or GO2 type of a variety, then I define pi A. So this is defined as uh, maps uh, between two algebra curves. So I'm gonna take, um, uh, right, so okay, G is still over there, but now B, uh, B is a, a quaternion, which is definite all places, except one, except the one place split, I mean, over a communion place, so B, uh, so at the infinity, so B V uh, B let me hold right so split at exactly one well at one arc one archimedian place one archimedian place and the last split had all the archimedian uh, archimedian places I mean for PID places. You, you might have some finally many places where this is now split, but the point is at Archimedean place, I only have one. So, so I, have, I have the Shimura curve. So the Shimura curve, let me write out the Shimura. Okay, now K, okay, from now on, K is, K is open compact. So I attach to G, the Shimura curve. So this is the Shimura curve or the, or the system or the, Projective system with uh, uh, Shimura curves parameters by k. So, so the parameterization goes to from here to a. Again, you want you want like I did over there. I have to rigidify. So let me call call a a circle here to mean to, to indicate I'm rigidifying by sending sending a certain distinguished choice of degree one divisor to to the to the to the origin of the input curve. So then I take a limit over k. Um, so, so what kind of object this is? So, so here I'm really, this, this has a group action, uh, uh, it has abelian group structure because a is a abelian variety. So, so I can do addition. So maybe I should take tensor product over, over c to get a c vector space. So in the end I out, so I get a c vector space and if, if you take A, well, in, in that case, you see that this will be actually a admissible representation of, so this has a representation of G of finite adels. So the finite adels acting on, on this vector space. Um, uh, so that will be the, the representation pi, uh, which is, you know, well, it's, it's the analog of the representation pi here. Um, so, so each each vector here will be 
will be one parameterization of A by certain Shimura curve. So I'm consider I'm kind of combining the issues of chosen uh, 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 which Shimura curve and chosen which parameterization. So both I'm kind of combining both pieces of information into into this definition. Um, so this will be a automorphic representation in the sense well it, it's, it only has Lanark meaning place. So it's uh, it's automorphic in the sense if you uh, if you uh, uh, com if you put artificially you know Archimedean place you put the, the weight two or all the Jekyll Allen's correspondence to the definite quaternion right and here I have some GO2 or inner form of GO2 so you get a actually honest automorphic representation on, on on the group G um, so so that is for pi A so so then well so then the formula can be written as so so the general Ozaki theorem. So here you will see this is an analogy with what's produced. So this is what uh, so we did with Xin uh, Yuan and Shou Zhang. So yes, John. Hmm? Any question? If you omitted the dot, did you see the picture? Dot, oh, the dot, yeah, yeah. The, the issue is the resignification, right? You might have you 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 have a much bigger space. So, for example, you can translate the map phi by a any elements in the model V group of A. Therefore, I mean, you get something that not really what you want. But in terms of automatic, the automatic uh, it's uh, well, say, so, yeah, what do you get? So, <laughs> so here. Yeah, yeah, I'm rigidifying here. This means rigidifying, really sending a degree one, this choice of degree one divisor to, to, to the zero, to the, to the orange. I mean, um, so, right. So, okay. So anyway, this in this way, well, okay, it takes work to to show that this is automorphic in the sense that I said it's actually decomposable as a tensor product over all places, non-commuting places. Uh, anyway, so if you take phi, that is you. Pi of a and phi do well inside the do abelian variety. You do the same for the do abelian variety. Uh, so then, what you prove is um, ah, <laughs> then I need to bring in this quadratic extension. So okay, I'm I'm not gonna let, let me not give the complete detail about defining the so so there's a, there's a recipe of defining. Uh, uh, Higgler divisor, Higgler points for this in, in this generality. So then you get so so the point is you get uh, so I can write it this way. So I can write in phi of h dh. Uh, but this the meaning of this is really so this is actually um, well this means certain point. So this means. Um, <clears throat> um, so phi of let me write as Shimura right attached to H, which are some special points, uh, same points. Um, so so this looks like what I did earlier because I'm I have a certain divisors on the Shimura curve. I'm using the parameterization phi to push forward to get a divisor on on the abelian right. Uh, but maybe this is not doesn't look very good because, and maybe it's better to write this as you know, as a notation. I'm writing this as integral, you know, integral phi of h, d of h, um, or bracket h. Uh, may, maybe this is not. A, we're here. Maybe I should write this as you know Shimura, Shimura variety attached to h. Um, so that's the analog to what I did earlier, right? I I, I write phi of x of k, which is my yk. Uh, uh, then I take the trace. So actually, yeah, this is the analog of zk. Z k. So this earlier. So this is so this is z of so zk was this integral. The integral was the trace operation. So okay, so so I get a point. 
Um, then I can take Laurent Tate height. So okay, this is my sort of definition here. So then I can write it this way. So the Laurent Tate height. So the Laurent Tate height. Um, so the Laurent Tate height for for those two points is given by the derivative of pi base change to f prime, then evaluate the center. So, um, so in this way, maybe it's it's more transparent. I mean, the, the analogy between Grozaghi and Wasbrugier's formula, um, where in, in Wasbrugier you have you have some functions. So. In the Wasbridge's formula, so Grozaghi. So here you have function phi. Um, so you have function phi and phi do uh, goes from from G bracket, right? So phi, it's a function from G bracket, the automorphic quotient to a complex number. Where on the other hand, Grozaghi case, you consider parameterization of uh, you know by Shimura, Shimura curve in this case with the value in A where A is a uh, input curve or GL2 type of you know variety or you know maybe in general some motif right so um, so of course um, this suggests right suggests some uh, generalization a um, pattern to generalize so, so here and here you get a central value. You get L function, L pi, f prime half, and here you get L pi f prime half derivative. Um, Uh, yeah, oh, the base change. That's pi a base change to f prime. Oh, here you mean, yeah, sorry, yes. Pi a. And also the dual, right? It's self dual. I mean, otherwise there'd be a symmetry. Uh, a symmetry here. The dual, yeah, yeah, I, well, I, I think I, to simplify, I wrote a as a unique curve, but in general, you take dual abelian variety, so then the neuron tate height, height will be between a and a dual. So, sure, but the automorphic yeah. representation for that dual thing. The automorphic representation here, yeah, this one will be the will be the contra gradient of, of pi, pi of pi. So, so there's a, there's a duality in, implicitly involved. Yeah. So the, so the duality between a and a dual in, induce a uh, isomorphism between this one with the contra gradient. That's that's the content of. Maybe that's what it, you were looking for. Oh, there you go. Okay, the central value is the same whether you put a there or a. Uh, oh, you mean oh the L function ah right so the oh yeah there's, there's a symmetry right <laughs> so if you yeah if you re replace pi by pi duo doesn't pi control doesn't change the L function right so any any more question here so far yeah pi a f prime yeah the base change yeah. <clears throat> should there be some buffers like uh, uh yeah yeah oh, I should put a dot here <laughs> to solve like all the depending on the choice of pi or something. Depending on the choice Ah right, how did I forget that? that's important? I wanted to say that because yeah, yeah that's right. So I wanted to put the pi v the the actually the, the the real interesting I mean one of the interesting feature is the completely parallel so V, V do. So the point is that here yeah, you can use exactly the same definition as the was So in some sense, uh, you know, you, you have three things. One is this height pair, and one is L function, one is those local local information. So my what I'm saying is one third of the two formulas are I mean they are the same. <laughs> I'm 
I'm recycling the same definition, which shows up over there. Um, so this actually partly addresses the issue I, I, I mentioned earlier, right? So in the, even in the Higgins original consideration, you, you I mean, you, you, you could have done differently. You could choose x0, 32. You can also choose x of 8, uh, although maybe they're the same or are they, <laughs> maybe they're related. So. But you can, even for the same modular curve, you can, I mean, you, for your, right, you, you can do whatever you like. You can choose different parameters. So what this formula tells you is, is that whatever you choose your parameterization, the, the, how, how to change is, is determined, but it is sort of completely encoded in, in this local information. So if you choose a different test vector or different parameterization, you just have to compute this local information, I mean, uh, those local factors. What is the H here? H is, uh, uh, where is it? H is over here. Which is over here, yeah. yeah. Uh, distribute, yes, so the invariancy plays, plays an important role because here, um, this is indeed, if you view this as a, uh, so if, if you view this construction, right, uh, but now you, you have to combine both together. So as, as a, so this has, this output is a real, I mean, complex number once I complexify everything. So you, your, so the output is a linear functional on the, on the pi a tensor pi a dual. So in fact, it is invariant under h times h. So, so you have a, so that's partly the, um, uh, that partly helps us prove, to prove this formula. So there's invariancy. So in some sense, you know a priori, you know this fact, uh, this uh, 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 sort of by you know two variable parent is actually proportional to to this parent. So therefore, you are looking for some you know universal quantity independent of the choice of of, of uh, vectors in this in those two representation spaces. What you're looking for is really a quantity depending only on the representation rather than, rather than on the choices of, of vec uh, vectors. So. Okay, so now I think, I hope we have a good kind of sense what we're looking for now. So now, I mean, okay, the, the, the easy way would be just replace uh, whatever we did over here. Um, uh, where's, ah, oh, there's one here. Ah, the hook. Ah. So here, so I can, I mean, the one way is to just replace G and H by anything, uh, by, you know, by whatever you like. <laughs> I mean, hopefully then you get something, but I, ho I wish things were not that simple, but, <laughs> but in, some, in some sense it's also, it seems to be like that actually. <laughs> so, uh, right, so now I, could erase this, let's see, I can erase the first, this one I want to keep. Um, um, yeah, I want to keep this, uh, this one, let me move to, uh, this goes up. Uh, maybe this also goes up. So I want to move to the high, sort of high, I mean, this is about, oh, you, you, so far we, we only used Shimura curves. So only uh, one dimensional Shimura variety. So now we want to, you know, go to um, higher dimensional situation. Uh, so one thing, actually I think one of the uh, very technical issue is, um, is what I wrote here, the neurontate height parent. Um, so let me let me take a you know short detour. Um, and let me recall you a little bit um, about height parent. Uh, so now 
<clears throat> right, so for, for height parent, um, yeah, let me recall your height. Uh, more. So, so this case is kind of nice because you have a um, parent between, between um, if you have a binary variety, you have a parent between the um, K point and the dual abelian variety, um, or also k point, so, or some number field. Uh, so what this says is that if you if you have a, well, th this is more or less the uh, Albanese variety. This is more or less the peak, you know, the peak zero of A. So it's a parent between zero cycle and divisors on, on, the, on the abelian variety. So in general, um, so in general, if you have any, so let's see, so review, quick, very quick review on height parent. Because as you see that, um, uh, on the comparison here, one hand I have, I have a function with C value, and on C, a complex number, I have a trivial uh, metric, right? You take the absolute value. And uh, on the right hand side in the Grozagi, I have a so, the, so I have a phi, which is a parameterization. I mean, you can think of phi as a function with a value in, in Abelian variety. On Abelian variety, I, I have a metric, I mean, a parent given by an orientated height parent. So now you want to look for something maybe well with the value generalizing, you know, a points of of Abelian variety, or here is really some you know factor of Jacobian variety of the, of the Shimura curve. So um, so one of the key is to to have some parent on the target of your automorphic function, you know, with quotation mark function with a value not necessarily in complex number but in a you know, certain motive. Um, so height parent here, let, let me, so let's write, let's say x is a, so temporarily let me write x as a arbitrary smooth projective variety over a certain number of field. So f is a number of field. Uh, right, so, um, so let, let me write chow, uh, maybe I can write over here, actually here, there's a notation. So chow, chow group. <clears throat> of co-dimension i, so this is a cycles, algebraic cycles of co-dimension, co-dimension i, uh, modular rational equivalence, so this is a abelian group, rational equivalence. Uh, just for simplicity, I will just ignore torsion, so, so this is a Q-vector space, so we'll kill coefficient. So kill coefficient, yes. or maybe later on I will even extend to complex coefficient just to ignore the issue of, uh, you know, finite. Sometimes you have to, I mean, the coefficients. It's better to go go to bigger field, uh, although things are really over number of fields. Some finite extension of Q. So then there is a well, at least there is a conjecturally defined height parent. Between child of i degree i child group. Ah, sorry, actually, one, one more thing. So th there's, there's a cycle class map goes to h2i of x. Okay, here I'm being, um, being vague, so you, you can choose any vehicle homology theory for x. Um, say, basic homology of complex points of C of x. Um, or or different theory. So anyway, so you have you t you have a cycle class map. So the kernel, so the cycle class, so the cycle class map. So the kernel is a sub subspace, Q vector space of child group. So this will be denoted by child of i x uh, lower zero, meaning the homological trivial algebra cycles. Um, so in the case of curve, for example, if x is a curve, the cycle class map is rather simple, it's, it's taken degree, so the kernel will be a degree zero, 
divisors on the, on the curve. Um, so the height parent is at least, well, conjecturally defined. It, it's a following parent. Um, so it's a parent between chow of i of x times chow of j of x goes to real number, just like narrow tate height, where whenever i plus j is, is complementary, complementary arithmetically, in a sense, i plus j is actually dimension of x plus 1. So dimension of x plus 1. So this extra 1 indicates, really, if you, if you extend everything to integral model over the row of integers, you do have a complementary dimension on the nodes. Um, so for example, in the case of a curve, you have coin dimension 1, coin dimension 1. You have 1 plus 1 equals 1 plus 1. Um, so in general, this is this is a um, well again. I mean, so I, I so I first read this parent from the you know the paper by Spencer Bro, where when he formulates his generalization of BSD conjecture for high dimensional variety. So so the so after half page less than a half page of his paper, he put the following. So um, unfortunately, one needs to assume, uh, make two uh, two assumptions. To define this parent. <laughs> uh, so the two assumptions he, 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 he remarked, which might be uh, universally true, and in any specific case, one can verify those two conditions. So what are the two conditions? So I will mention maybe in the, in the, in the, in the uh, uh, so roughly speaking, the, the two conditions. One is uh, there exists a a regular integral model for x. So depending on your perspective, <laughs> whether that's a uh, easy or I mean, in any case, can, you can verify or not. <laughs> so uh, at least in the case of Shimura variety, we know it's it, it's it's in, in some desirable situations you can construct integral model which are regular, but in general, it's it, it's it's a rather hard question. I mean, um, but that's actually not not the not, that's actually the easy part of the assumption. Uh, the second assumption really involves, uh, you know, standard conjecture on the special fiber. So once you have integral model, you also have to assume the special fiber must satisfy, you know, standard conjectures on algebra cycles. So, so, um, so in some sense, it's well. Um, I mean, some sense, the, the paper, I mean, Spencer Baroja's paper, the two remarks helped me a lot because it's so optimistic. And I never, so I, I continue to work on the subject without, without worrying about uh, how to actually make the definition. Uh, uh, so, okay, uh, fortunately, um, uh, what's fortunate is actually you can, um, you, you have some alternatives to, to the height parent. So I want to mention, um, I mean, you can see alternatives or, yes? That, that's a very good question. Uh, in fact, the assumption was, well, I, I will mention when I, when I uh, actually, in, you know, in a short moment. So let me, so let me address your question when I, so, so there are two two alternatives. Um, uh, why is so? Why is you can you can do use a GLA uh, GLA um, uh, arithmetic intersection? So, so this is this is in the in the style of our Kalov uh, theory, um, where rather than um, uh, rather than um, Considering the child group of, of uh, this variety, you suppose you have some regular integral model, so you can consider arithmetic child group, which, which I think was introduced in in Chao Li's talk. So where x, see, so I have a calli uh, calligraphical x. This means the integral model, uh, regular integral model. Um, so, so there is a 
There is a parent. Of course, the um, so there is such a parent. Um, of course, the the question is that how do you kind of extend everything in a canonical way, uh, um, where the you know the, the the choice of if you have one side one you know sorry actually zero zero I forgot to put. Um, so the second I mean the hypothesis in 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 Blaho's paper was that every every cycle here has to be extended to element in the arithmetic child group in, in such a way that it's orthogonal to to the cycle supporting a special fiber uh, uh, in the complementary dimension. So that's 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 a precise formulation one needs uh, to pull that. I think Kuhnerman made this explicit. Uh, I mean, made this argument. So Kuhnerman showed that if you assume enough standard conjecture on the spatial fiber of the integral model, I suppose the model is semi-stable, uh, then you can prove the existence of, of this lifting, I mean this extension. So if you have a cycle, you want to extend the integral model. Um, so what you need is actually something like theta conjecture for the spatial fiber. Uh, so that the partly, that's, that's one part of the conjecture. So, and one part of the condition where you need to, to use, uh, you need to assume in order to, to, to extend. Um, okay, the good news is if, if there's no bad reduction, so you, for example, if this is actually smooth everywhere, I mean, it's a, it has good reduction everywhere, then you, 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 you do have a natural extension. You just, you just take the risky closure of any, any, any class here, you take the risky closure, it will give you a well defined height curve. So if, if you are willing to work with a, a model which is smooth everywhere, if you are lucky, you have such a model, then, then there, there is a unconditionally defined height parent. Sure, but you need to make some sort of infinity there, right? Actually, the Archimedean place is always well defined. So there, there is a local height theory for Archimedean place. So the issue is only at... But the parent will depend on that choice, right? Uh, right, but there's there's opti I mean, there, there is a... Uh, distinguished choice, which uh, does not depend on any choice. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can make a preferred choice. So, <laughs> mm? so that's one one alternative. Se the second one. Um, is that you can you can work with periodic height. So so Nekrova. Okay, um, so this may be more complicated. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not work I mean I'm on the blackboard, so it's even more difficult to write. Maybe it's uh, I, did I put it correctly? Okay, even Pierre Henry doesn't know, so then I have a good excuse. <laughs> so Nekrova has has a periodic height. Periodic height parent. Um, so this has better, I mean, this assumes much less. Uh, it only relies on the weight homology conjecture. So if you assume weight homology for the bad places, then you can make, uh, I mean, and it's also periodic analog and so on. So then you can make unconventional definition of periodic height. Here you have, you have, you have a parent, uh, then you get a parent not in real number, but in periodic number. Q, in QP, so it relies on some additional choices, but there's, uh, the, you know, you only have to verify it with a monodrome, and it's periodic analog. Um, okay, so so what I'm going to do is just treat this height parent as something you know, which is already defined. Um, uh, so what you can, what you do concretely is really either to work with. Um, uh, the periodic height parent, or to work with, uh, I mean, you know, the Gilles Solis version, which involves additional additional choice of 
additional you know, choices of extension of your cycle to integral model, uh, which might not be unique. <coughs> um, okay, so any question for, for the height pairing? Um, all right, so now let's, let's, let's go back. <laughs> let's move back to the... Uh, um, uh, to the you know high dimensional uh, Yeah. <coughs> uh, oh, no, um, so what I yeah when I wrote the kernel, I mean so you if you if you well if you have a cycle in the gener generic fiber say co homology trivial, so if you extend to the integral model, then you apply Julius Sole. Uh, the, you know, you're supposed to make a choice, also a nice choice, which is not unique, but the parent is, is independent. So the number, the output is not independent. So that means if you prove the height parent is non-zero, then it does imply, it does imply the cycle is non-trivial uh, in the child group. Yeah, so I think that's, that's okay. Oh, the periodic height, I see. Oh, that, uh, that's a, right, that's an independent question. So. That's a very good question. So, so the two par the parents over there, they don't give you the same they don't give you the same information. So why not vanishing doesn't imply the other one. That's not even known for for the curve case, I, I believe. We don't know if say in the case of a curve, if you have a PRD height parent, you, you can also look at the neurotated height parent. Uh, the non vanishing they are not equivalent. I mean, not, they're not known to be equivalent. So you might have a, potentially, you might have a situation where you have a cycle which has non zero neuron theta height, but vanishing periodic height. This might happen before anyone proves otherwise. <laughs> Conjecturally, I think if you, well, the periodic height depends on choices. Remember, there's some additional choices make it. I think. Can, Morally speaking, you believe that equivalent, right? So is it really said only in the bad um, No, <laughs> okay. So the PID height also involves other choices like the Hodge filtration, the splitting of Hodge filtration. So, so there's some additional data in this definition. So it's slightly more, more uh, uh, delicate. So, but anyway, some bilinear parent which has the correct functional, func you know, functorial properties. You, you, you need. Um, okay, so I, I'm so maybe that was a little <laughs> distraction <laughs> from the so so what I what we need is some some parent and as you see we need some bilinear parent right like to, which plays a role of this neuronated height parent so you, uh, so you can apply all those constructions uh, so so first of all you have you have some serious trouble with the battery reduction. But secondly, in the PRD height case, you also have to make some additional choice of, of, um, um, of, of a splitting of Hodge filtration. But, but this cho additional choice of Hodge, splitting of Hodge filtration is, I think it's natural from the PRD L function perspective. So, so maybe it's, it's not surprising. Uh, after all, you, in that case, you would expect to replace the UUL function by a PRD L function where to construct your PLL function, you have to make some choice of, of a split and Hodge filtration anyway. So, so there's actually good news. So, to have such uh, 
dependency on the choice of uh, stability. All right, so so I can um, good. So now I, I want to move to to the you know <laughs> finally <laughs> to the high dimensional case, but maybe um, I mean in some sense now you already you can already guess what's happening, right? So now I replace any uh, replace my G and H by by your you know your favorite uh, pair of spher spherical variety uh, depending on your own preference. So <laughs> so now let's see. Uh, so I will I will just do the you know the the Gangros Prasad situation, so the G GGP situation. Partially it has two G, right? So G, which is give you more weight. So I have double G here. So, <laughs> so here, um, so GGP situation, GGP situation. Um, so you choose, um, <clears throat> so I involve this, so I have to use this quadratic extension. So now let me, actually in the unitary case, so I can, I can remark later on for the other cases, uh, unitary case. Um, so now that, so that you, what's involved is, um, yeah, so I have a um, Hermitian space V, Hermitian, so relative to this quadratic extension, so of dimension, So equal to n for some integer n times two. So you choose a vector. Well, you choose a well. Let's say choose a subspace. Call dimension one. Call the v float. Call dimension one. Non-degenerate. Everything is non-degenerate. Hermitian space. So the group. Uh, the group will be. I have the unitary group. Um, so the unitary group of V flat embedded into unitary group of V. Um, but I'm also I can also take the graph and the diagonal embedding. So so this will be my group H. So it's group G. Um, <coughs> Um, so to have a, uh, to have smaller varieties, and I, I'm gonna assume I'm gonna be in this situation where, again, this is a CM quadratic extension, so CM. So F is a totally real CM field. Uh, so I'm gonna assume the signature of the Hermitian space <coughs> sign of. Sign of a uh, formation space V, and our community place will be um, n minus one one at one place, and uh, a positive definite at other places. So the point is, it has only one one place where. So this, I think, this was the same situation as in Sugu's talk uh, for the unitary Shimura variety, uh, where, which was used to construct Galois representation. Uh, I mean, partly maybe. Um, maybe I'm using positive so definite. Maybe Sug was using negative, de negative definite, um, or maybe you were using positive definite uh, before. Then the secretly you switch to negative def because now I think people prefer to be negative uh, for for many reasons, right? <laughs> so okay, so I have maybe I should do that too in the future. So. Um, uh, Right, so this again is the same for the for the v, v, v flat. I have also one place where other places have been definite. So then I have um Shimura variety. Uh, so I have this embedding of maybe you know the projective system of Shimura variety. Uh, okay, it really means I well I'm gonna ignore the issue of chosen level. Although in concrete uh, in concrete situation, I will have to actually 
put it on level compiled open subgroup. For the moment, let's not worry about it. Um, <clears throat> um, so now I'm, I have, I mean, I, I have to make a choice. I can do the most general, I mean, most, in some sense, conjecture based on conjecture because I have to use this height parent, which is defined, which is only defined, con you know, conjecturally. Uh, but then I can also, like, like I mentioned earlier, I can do the PR height pair or maybe using Julia Soleil to make things actually unconditional. Uh, so it's actually, I mean, it's, it's easier to just do the, just, for, just to formulate, to give you a flavor. It's, it shouldn't be taken as a, uh, the actual thing you want to work with. Um, so here, <clears throat> um, so now, um, yeah, um, Actually, uh, so you, you see, there's one still one missing ingredient here. I don't know how to make uh, in, the, in the growth zag because I need to have a binomial variety or elliptic curve where I consider parameterization. Right here, I considered uh, I have this Shimura variety and uh, some elliptic curve. I can look at the parameterization where the parameterization space. I mean, the, the space of parameterizations has a group structure and then give you a representation. So um, I don't, in high dimension, this seems to be <clears throat> seems to be hard to formulate. Uh, so um, um, so so actually, maybe I, I would prefer just do a PL version. So which so let's see. In that case. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, or okay, or maybe let me uh, okay, let me uh, so let me let me make a provisional formulation. So so here I have I have um. I have this Shimura variety here. Let's look at the child group. So I have I have elements in the child group of 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 dimension, so cone dimension uh, uh, cone dimension uh, n minus one, right? So so this has cone dimension n minus one. So the dimension so this has dimension n minus one plus n minus two. So this has dimension uh, n minus two. Um, so over over e uh, over over f prime. So all the variety defined over f prime. <clears throat> so I have this class here. Um, so this has a, has a heck action given by by the identic points, uh, along our commuting points. Uh, so I'm gonna assume. So I'm gonna just make. So, okay, this is highly sort of uh, conjectural. So it's supposed to de decompose as according to representations of, of G. Um, so I'm going to write this as. So again, this this I put a star here to, to to warn you. It's it's not to be taken as something which we can prove in the you know, in the near future. But anyway, if I have such a decomposition into representations of of G, um, so I will, I will write the component to be so the Python component. I will write. Pi component. Oh, sorry. T times pi. Maybe pi f. So finite part. Um, so um, okay. Just for normalization issue, let me let me write this as uh, pi f. Uh, maybe put a dual here. J just change notation. You know. 
Um, right. OK. So in that case, so now I can, um, so if I have this decomposition, so what happened is you, you can make this work for the PRD high dependence. So for, on the child group level, we don't have this really, we don't really have this decomposition, but for the, uh, when you work with the PRD height, you can, you can make this actually uh, make this work. Um, <clears throat> oh, I just erased. <laughs> oh, the, ah, right, okay, I just, uh, yeah, I should have not erased it, and then I can recycle it. So, so now let me just state the conjecture, well, the form of the conjecture. Um, again, this put a quotation mark because I, I don't really have this decomposition, but so if you choose phi in pi f, then I can look at, again, I can look at the, the, you know, the, the value of this cycle. So I can write this as, again, integral, like before. Uh, then I can, I can write this, so this is definition. So then I can, so the conjecture would be, so this, this parent, and now take the, the height parent. So the height parent, okay, whichever version you take, we, 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 we talked about earlier, it's supposed to be given by the L function. It's the same L function which appear in the global gangros prasad conjecture, or pi f prime derivative, um, then times the, the local the local quantity. So suppose this is this is a tensor pro it's decomposable. Uh, so, so, I mean, yeah, it looks the same. And the local quantity is, is defined as, you know, you chain Ikeda type conjecture. Okay, so, so, so that's the formulation of the conjecture. So, um, so, so next talk I will talk about the R, you know, relative trace formula approach, uh, where I can make things, you know, unconditional, you know, what's, what, what is our, I know the local statement. Uh, right, so I'm running out of time already, so let me stop here. Sorry? What is the pi here? Pi, so pi is any, um, so pi will be, so pi is a representation of g of a, where automorphic, temporal automorphic representation, where f pi f is a finite part, not a commuting part. So okay, implicitly I'm assuming a lot, because over there I'm kind of seeing that only the automorphic guys will appear, or, which is not known, I mean, we don't know what kind of representation of g of finite ideals will show up in the child group. So, so, so it's, it's only to be taken, you know, it's kind of based on a lot of conjectures. Um, okay. Are you saying that you need to like assume you can attach Galois representation? Oh, no, the, no, here, the, here there's no Galois representation here. It's just child group. Okay. Right. So, oh, sure. okay, uh, so this is not the reason that you wanted the signature of the unitary group to be. Right, so I mean, the signature has to be that one because you see, the L function we expect to have is the, the standard L function of the base change, right? So that, that is exactly uh, from the, well, if you look at Shimura variety with that signature, the Galois representation precisely give you, give you this L function. You know, the BSD type conjecture says that cycle, algebra cycle should be related to L function, the Hasse OV L function, right? So, so here, if you know the L function, if you expect the L function to be this, to be the standard one, you have to use that one. Otherwise, you can you cannot hope for anything. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. So a question about the Nakovar PRD type pairing. I see. Yeah. Is that supposed to generalize to a loose uh, formula uh, of the PRD type of? Oh, oh, that's a good question. Right. So, yes, in the case of 
in the in the case of GO2, um, I mentioned the Grozagi, but there was also periodic version of uh, Grozagi formula due to uh, parent rail, where you consider the periodic height of Higgin points, where you you replace the L function by the periodic L function. Yeah. Yeah, is there a conflict type conjecture for the Chow group? Let's say that again. That is there a code switch, code type Oh, codeless type conjecture for, for the, the child group. <coughs> I think if you combine codeless con codeless conjecture, tells you how to describe cohomology. I think balance and the blah, they have conjecture on filtration with child group, how to express the how how they depend on the cohomology. So you combine both, I think you you will get some type of codeless conjecture. But it's you know it's kind of a combination of two two. Uh, Independent conjectures. Okay, so uh, so let's take a break and reconvene at eleven o five, and uh, let's tangway one more time.